What's up guys, Smash Adams here, bringing you guys a brand new deck profile, and this time it's going to be on Dynamis. Now, the ability to just get comfortable with running a beat-down, tournament-savvy Pendulum deck, it's one of those decks that really caught my eye, especially how well they flow together with uh, Cyber Dragon Infinity. Of course, since it's really easy to get Cyber Dragon Infinity with the amount of fives that you spam off of. And um, getting scales is not really much of a problem, especially with the new support that's coming out, which I will do a card review on within the next week, along with an update of this using the Draco Slayers, because I do love both versions. I just wanted to run the pure version just to get uh, more of a feel to running the deck overall. And with, over the past week, it's been doing wonders running the pure build. Um, Dynamists are a lot of fun. Like I said, they are tournament savvy, and they are one of those decks that you can run on a budget, so you can't really go wrong with getting everything that you need for this deck. And with Cyber Dragon Infinity as well, since it's been reprinted, it's, no, it's a no-brainer to um, just get whatever you need on a budget. But needless to say, Dynamists are one of those decks that um, you can get away with an OTK or two, but you also have to be mindful of your plays because keep in mind, the 6 and 3 scales are important because the threes prevent your dynamis from being um, destroyed by battle and by card effects, while the sixes make your dynamis impervious to uh, card effects, um, which, in my opinion, is really, really good. So say if they wanted to play 101, guess what? Tribute that scale, not happening. Or if they wanted to play Raigeki, uh, you can tribute that scale and just stop them from being destroyed. So... Nonetheless, you're going to have protection all around because of these cards. And with the new trap card that's coming out, it's going to be easy to set up your plays and then spam your board with Dynamis, from what I've heard. And I believe the trap card is called Dynamis Howling, but disregarding that, I will get to that another time. But onto the deck profile. So I'm going to show you all the deck, explain a couple of my tech choices, and without further ado, here is Dynamis. To start off, of course, we've got. Three Dynamis Spinos. He's one of your main beaters to the deck. And you can easily set up an OTK with this card. And if you have multiples of these on your board, you can't really go wrong. Um, I believe there's no limit to his tributing ability because he does have two unique effects. One allows him to attack directly, while the other allows him to attack a second time. And if you have a limit of removal, I believe both effects can work. Um simultaneously yeah that's the word i'm looking for simultaneously during the uh battle phase but the downside is you have to activate this effect during the main phase in order for it to work so if you play that limit or removal hands down you've got game it's um it's one of those cards that you need to run in spades not just because of it it's a three scale and all but you can easily spam it out depending on what scales you have next we've got three rex the second best beater in the deck um, to have the ability to just um, do a second attack and also do piercing damage or just have the ability to shuffle a card in your opponent's hand or on the field at random on their side and it easily gets 100 points afterwards, it's, in, it's incredible, let me tell you. And um, the, the fact that they remind me of Zoids was the other reason why they caught my eye. Um, if, you, if you guys look at them, if you guys look at how they're designed... Because the Dynamite Spinos reminded me of the Geno Breaker from the second series, if I'm not mistaken, with Raven and the others. But um, aside from that, Dynamis are really amazing, especially with spamming whatever beaters you want, including Rex and Spinos, because you are going to be relying on those. Next we've got three Ceratops. A lot of people cut this down to two or one because they didn't want to draw into it. But in many cases, I had no problem spamming this off. Um, just as long as you have a Dynamis of a different name besides this, you can easily summon this onto your field rather than just wasting your time just waiting to get like two different scales into your Pendulum Zones just to summon this. Because he, he's kind of like a Cyber Dragon, but you have to have a Dynamis of a different name in order to use it. Downside is if you have a Ceratops, you can't use it. So um, yeah, so be mindful of that. And next we got the Cyber Dragon of the deck, which is three Brachion. But the downside is, with his ability, your opponent has to have a monster with the highest attack. It doesn't matter how many that they have compared to yours. You can even have um, a board with just one Dynamis that's lower than their monsters, and you can still spam this off. 
but if you want to just get this out all alone and just pro probably get a ceratops if you don't have any scales you can do that too and then get an infinity afterwards and next we've got the mini dynamis which are of course uh three Turan. i like this card because it's basically a stratos for the deck you can get charged with it you can get rush you can get um, Eruption, you can get Dynamis Toweling when it comes out. Um, downside is you can't get the Field Spell, which would have been broken nonetheless. But still, hands down, Turan is a uh, must-have in spades. You need to run this. And the fact that it's an 1800 beater, it's really cool too. And next we got three Plesios to have the ability to shrink your, all of your opponent's monsters by 100 attack and deed depending on the amount of dynamis that you have on your field, including scales, spell trap cards, and monsters. It's really, really unique. And it, it's it's really, really good, including itself. But, um, but yeah, Plesios, you need to run this in spades, too. Three Stegosaur. Now, a lot of people are a little opinionated on this card. I only use them mainly for just the three scale purposes, so that way I can just have something else to fall back on. But um, nonetheless, um, his destruction effect is okay. But if you have um, like dynamic power load, you really shouldn't have a problem making him a beater. And lastly, for the Dynamis lineup, three Ankylosaur. Now, a lot of people are going to be relying on this card because it's basically a Macros Cosmos during the um, during the battle phase. So. Whatever monsters that your dynamis destroy, they don't go to the graveyard. They get banished. <laughs> so good luck with that. <laughs> so, um, but needless to say, um, Ankylosaur, um, as far as its D goes, you can easily use this as a bluff. But I like using him for his banishing ability too. So that's it for the monsters. Now onto the spells, which should be basic. We've got three dynamis charge, your tanky slash rota for the deck. And say if you play something like Spiritual Water Art that tributes it, or if they're destroyed and they go straight to the extra deck, you can add that Dynamis back that was destroyed. Um, downside is you can only use its uh, fetching ability once per turn along with the um, adding ability from the extra deck to the hand. But nonetheless, you need to run three of these because it's going to make your deck fluent. I'm telling you guys. And that was my and that was my iPad. <laughs> okay, aside from that, one dynamic one dynamic power load. Sorry guys. Um, yeah, my tongue's tied today. One dynamic power load to have the ability to have all your dynamis gain three hundred attack points and to shut down your opponent's cards during the battle phase. It's basically an Armades and an attack point gainer built into one. It's really really unique to run. Even though I'm mad, it doesn't count as a dynamis card. In my opinion, it should because it flows well with the Dynamis. Two MSTs for back row issues, because like I said, in many cases, you are going to run into these um, situations where you have to destroy stuff that can put a damper on your strategies. And MST is one of them. One Raigaki to clear your opponent's board and then just swing with whatever beaters that you have. And one limiter removal, because... Your whole lineup is machines, why not? <laughs> now, I am thinking of running Spiritual Water Art because of how fluent it works with Dynamis Charge, so I will keep that in mind. And now for the traps, we've got, of course, three Dynamis Rush to have the ability... Man, this damn iPad. Anyway, moving ahead. Uh, Dynamis Rush is one of those must-haves as traps. It's the ability to just activate it, and of course your Dynamis is impervious to card effects for the whole turn until the end phase, and then it dies, goes to the extra deck, it's really good. Usually you're going to get the beaters like Spinos and Rex with this, but you never go wrong with it. Next we got one Eruption. I'm running this as a tech choice. You don't use it a lot, but say if your Dynamis dies, for example, via by Rush, or just by battle or by a card effect on your opponent's side, you can activate it and then destroy one of their cards as an exchange so hey your dynamis dies activate this payback <laughs> um but yeah dynamis eruption is pretty underrated two storming mirror force um uh, why not because uh say if you're running into burning abyss they can't get their effects off in the graveyard i mean i mean of course because their stuff is going to go back to the hand but in many cases if you want to run into those decks where that you have to rely on um 
them just dis having their stuff destroyed in order to chain off of their abilities. Stormy Mirror Force can just send it all back. So it's basically a compulse on steroids. One Saw Morning and one Bottomless because they're really, really good in the deck. Now for the extra deck, the extra deck is mainly all Xyz. We've got, of course, two Nova to set up with your Infinity. And, of course, two Cyber Dragon Infinity. You're going to be relying on these for most of your OTKs, but not all of them. I was able to summon two at once at one point, believe it or not. Next we got one Digvorjak. You do rely on this sometimes, even though it's not, it's not hard to get out, but at the same time you don't use it as much. But... His ability is pretty good. The ability to just mill um, the top three cards off of your opponent's deck, and if they're monsters, you can destroy as many as you can, depending on the monsters that they milled. It's it's crazy. The Borzak is amazing. And he's a machine, too. Um, one Abyss Splash. You don't use it a lot, but his, his effect is pretty good. The downside is, if you deal any damage, it's cut in half after its attack is doubled. One Durando, mainly, mainly to reshuffle my hand if I have, like, dead hands just to make it flexible enough. But it is easy to make, too. That's the other reason why I run it. One Tech of Freezer Dawn. Say if I wanted to waste a unit off of Infinity, for example, I can use this as a substitute. So, they, um, Infinity, guess what? Not wasting anything. This takes its place. Waste a unit. But, um, yeah, Freezing Dawn's pretty good. I may run something else in its place, but so far, Freezing Dawn's working out well for me. One Vulcus Horse for burn damage, because it's, it's amazing like that. And then you can go straight into Gaia. And speaking of Gaia, one Gaia for piercing damage after that. One Abyss Dweller, because you do run water monsters in this deck, why not? And it can easily shut down Burning Abyss or any graveyard effects. And then for the rest of the generics, one Castell, one 101, and two Hope Woven Spider Sharks. They're basically like Muhammad Shark, but they have the ability to reduce all your opponent's monsters by a thousand um, during the battle phase. And the cool thing is you can revive any monster of your choice from the graveyard. But um, yes, Hope Woven Spider Shark is pretty good. So that's it for the deck, guys. Hope you all enjoyed this little deck profile I put together. Please leave a like and favorite if you enjoyed. If you have any suggestions, leave them. I'm open to them. I plan on making a Draco Slayer version in the next week when I have the time, like I mentioned earlier. And I will do a card review on Dynamis Howling when, it, when I um, actually look it up, of course, and actually take the time to actually just thoroughly research it. But needless to say, Dynamis are amazing. Anyways, hit me up in the comments, don't forget to subscribe, and until next time, this is Smash Adams, signing out.